Duly Noted, a health and care podcast, is the official podcast series of Duly Health and Care. Each podcast features physicians or team members discussing groundbreaking topics and innovations that help listeners reimagine and better understand an extraordinary health and care experience. Vaginal discharge is not a topic typically discussed, unless you're in your doctor's office. So today, Dr. Elizabeth Friedman, obstetrician and gynecologist, will fill us in on what we need to know. Welcome to Duly Noted, a health and care podcast from Duly Health and Care. I'm Maggie McKay. Thank you so much for being here today, Dr. Friedman. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Let's just get right into it. And first of all, what are some common causes of vaginal discharge? First of all, discharge could be normal. So I just want to make sure that that's clear, that definitely some amount of discharge is normal. Some other common causes of vaginal discharge could be an infection in the vagina, cervix, or uterus, a reaction to something inside the vagina, such as a retained tampon or condom. It could also be a reaction to a soap or other product that was in the vagina. And then sometimes we see some changes in the body that happen after menopause that can also cause some abnormal discharge. So is there such a thing as healthy vaginal discharge? Oh, definitely. So vaginal discharge is made by the cells lining the vagina and cervix. It's regulated by the hormone estrogen, which is why we typically see it more likely in women that are menstruating who have not gone through menopause yet. It can be clear, it could be white, it could be thick, it could be mucus-like, it can change during your cycle, it can be more heavy sometimes during pregnancy or during ovulation. Definitely, there's some natural changes and fluctuations to it, but yes, it's very, very common for most people to have about a half to one teaspoon of discharge on a daily basis. And how do you know if it's considered normal or abnormal? What are the signs? So sometimes could be itchiness of the vagina or the area around the vagina. If you're noticing redness, pain, or swelling around the vagina, if the discharge is foamy or has a greenish yellow color to it, or if it has blood in it, if it has a bad odor to it, if you're noticing that you're having pain with urination or with intercourse, or if you're it, are noticing a fever associated with it. Are there any specific characteristics or changes in discharge that might indicate you have a potential infection or other gynecological condition? Similar to kind of what I talked about before, that would be abnormal odor, abnormal color, causing other symptoms such as itchiness, swelling, and redness. And what about certain medications or contraceptives, lifestyle factors? Can those affect vaginal discharge? And if so, what should women be aware of? That's a great question. Definitely birth control can change the type of discharge that you're having and how heavy it is. In particular, I notice it more with people who are using a vaginal ring for birth control. And sometimes we see some more frequent vaginal infections with the IUDs as well. So it can be something important to note. What about medications? Typically, not so much with medications. Any lifestyle factors that contribute to it? So lifestyle factors that definitely can help prevent discharge would be you want to make sure you're using non-scented cleansers. So like Dove soap, for example, is a great one. Taking baths in warm water that's plain without like scented bath products in it and avoiding like sprays, powders, or using baby wipes or any scented toilet paper. Those things can kind of all contribute to vaginal irritation and discharge. What are some tips or practices to maintain healthy vaginal discharge, as well as prevent infections, like you were saying? When should you seek medical care? Some of the things I just kind of talked about in terms of avoiding unscented cleansers, other things that you can do is make sure that you're using unscented laundry detergent, avoiding fabric softener, making sure you're wearing cotton underwear that's breathable. All those things can help. And then Definitely seek medical attention if you're noticing pain, an abnormal odor to it. If you are concerned that you may have left something inside the vagina, fever, and you know other new symptoms that are a change that you haven't noticed before. I never even thought of that laundry detergent one, but that makes sense. And cotton underwear are kind of hard to find these days. Yeah, <laughs> aren't they? It's, it's true. I mean, maybe it's a little bit of a joke, but I just tell people, like, let your vagina breathe. Like, it wants to breathe. (laughs) So avoiding really tight clothing and pantyhose and those kinds of things can also help as well. Right. Would it help to not wear underwear when you sleep? That's another thing that people can try as well. 
And then the other important thing to help prevent infection would be using condoms and practicing safe sex. So using condoms and practicing activities just to help prevent infection from spreading. Is there anything else you'd like to add in closing that maybe we didn't cover that people need to know? We're always here to see you and help you out if you are having any issues at all. And we are so used to talking about this issue. So never be worried or ashamed of talking about issues that relate to the vagina or anything else that you you know, are a little bit worried about talking about. This is something that your gynecologist talks about all the time and it's used to talking about. So we're happy to help you. It's a really good point. I know people are embarrassed to bring stuff up and maybe they don't bring it up because they're embarrassed, but that's the last thing you want to do. Exactly. Like if you're having any issues at all, we want to see you and and check it out for you. Well, thank you so much for making the time to be here. We appreciate you sharing your expertise. Thanks so much for having me. Again, that's Dr. Elizabeth Friedman. And if you'd like to find out more, please visit dulyhealthandcare.com. That's D-U-L-Y healthandcare.com. If you found this podcast helpful, please share it on your social channels and check out our entire podcast library for topics of interest to you. Thanks for listening. I'm Maggie McKay. This is Duly Noted, a health and care podcast from Duly Health and Care.